Hi friends. So you want to know what it's like to retire and live in Mexico. There are two parts to that, retiring and living in Mexico. And uh, living in Mexico, if you're not retired, can be tough. Uh, I have people ask me, well, uh, I have a little bit of income and um, I think I can live cheap in Mexico, so I'm getting uh, five, six, eight hundred dollars a month, and uh, can I live on that? Well, a lot of Mexicans do. But in order to be a legal foreign resident of Mexico, you need to have about between twelve hundred and twelve hundred and fifty dollars per month of income that you can count on. Uh, that's the rule. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Living in Mexico as a retired person who does have the income to do that can be very comfortable. So retiring is the biggest part of that retiring in Mexico part because making a living down here is um, it can be tough. I'm not saying you can't do it, but for a foreign person to come to Mexico and start a business or have a little side business or uh, actually get a job, that's difficult. Now, the part about uh, living in Mexico, that's very pleasant. And I have to tell you that during these times of the coronavirus, it's even more pleasant than it has been in the past. And for those of you who haven't watched my videos for very long, when I say the past, I'm talking about I've lived here for nearly 20 years in Ajijic, Mexico, on the north shore of Lake Chapala, south of Guadalajara, up here in the high plateau of central Mexico. Um, the reason I say that it's more that it's nicer than it has been sometimes in the past is because it's tranquilo. Um, the coronavirus has shut down a lot of Mexican parties and Mexicans really do know how to party. And although I love a party, um, sometimes uh, going on till the wee hours of the morning on a Friday or Saturday night can be annoying if it's what they call an eventos with several hundred people and a banda band. Um, up the street uh, a ways because it sounds like uh, they're dancing in your bedroom. It's been quiet because the coronavirus has people locked down and Mexico has a stay-at-home order and um, prohibits more than 10 people from getting together and I don't think it's being actively policed but I think um, um, Many, many, if not most, Mexicans are taking it seriously and doing what they're asked with regard to social distancing. Uh, I do see, as I make uh, an essential trip out here and there, a lot more people wearing masks, and I'm encouraged by that uh, with regard to Mexico's chances for not having a big spike. Uh, Lynn and I are still social distancing. My maid came yesterday uh, for the first time in a month because I, a month ago I paid her for the month and said don't come for a month. Um, it was, yesterday was uh, Cinco de Mayo. Uh, the 5th of May. And um, for those of you who don't know, Cinco de Mayo is not um, it's not a huge big celebration in Mexico. It's more of a U.S. Uh, invention about uh, a day to celebrate. So Cinco de Mayo isn't a big deal in Mexico anyway, but um, she came and I paid her for another month and told her I would see her on the 5th of June. Again, um, just doing what we can to keep ourselves isolated from the general population. Uh, I did ask her, her name is Anna, uh, if she knew anyone or anyone in her family or anyone she knew or anyone she had heard of was sick 
with the virus here on the north shore of Lake Chapala, and she said no. She didn't know anyone, hadn't heard of anyone, and um, neither has anyone else that I talked to, so we're feeling pretty fortunate about that. But still, those of us who are um, uh, of a certain age are taking every precaution we possibly can. And I have to tell you, staying at home here on my half acre of gardens and big uh, house is not um, a terrible burden. I feel bad for a lot of people who have a lot less space to roam in. Uh, speaking of the maid, <laughs> you wonder how my days go as a retiree in Mexico. I'll tell you how this day is going. I set up the camera over there because I was going to show you what I was doing. I'm washing dishes. You know, I heard uh, <clears throat> I heard something uh, the other day uh, on the internet, so it must be true. <laughs> no, uh, that Cinco de Mayo uh, fell on Taco Tuesday, uh, which is unusual. And uh, the problem is that the whole darn thing was canceled by a virus named after a Mexican beer. I thought that was uh, cute. Anyway, as I said in one of my other videos, I am the maid. Oh, I also said I am the barber. I had, uh, I had a haircut. And for those of you who missed it, I'm my own barber. I have been since I was 17 years old. Uh, there's a story. Well, not much of a story, but I'll tell it anyway. I went off to college and uh, went to a barber who I've never been to before. And I have a double crown that's up there where your hair winds around. I have two of those, as some people do. And if you don't leave the hair long right back up in here, if you cut it like they do when they get a regular haircut, it sticks up. It sticks up like alfalfa. I'm talking about the character from The Little Rascals, for those of you who are old enough to know what I'm talking about. And so I went and got a haircut, and, you know, you're a freshman in college, you're kind of self-conscious and stuff, and here all of a sudden I got this stuff sticking up, and I said, I can do a better job. So I, the next time I cut my own hair, and long story short, I've never been, to a, I've never been back to a barber since. So, I am the maid, I am the barber. Uh, the rainy season started here in Mexico. You know, we have a sort of a, I guess you call it a, a, a barometer or a, a thing that foretells when the rainy season is going to start. We call them rain birds, and they're actually cicadas. Well, they start making that uh, very shrill sound that cicadas make, and the first time you hear it in the spring, which is generally sometime in April uh, or early May, the legend is that the rains will start in six weeks after you hear the first rain bird. Well, we heard the first rain bird about six weeks ago, and last night, no, it was the night before, um, Cinco de Mayo. Today is Thursday. You'll be watching this on Friday. Uh, the rain started, and they started in earnest. You know, a big, huge storm, thunder, lightning all across the lake. Um, uh, when I'm done with the dishes here, I'll take you out in the yard and show you what kind of a mess the rain and the wind does. So let's go out in the yard and take a look. The gardener is still coming three days a week. And uh, yesterday he trimmed all of the bougainvillea down to the level of the roof there. He needs to trim that part over there also. And he trimmed this palm up, cut all of the fronds off there.
Oh look, the shrimp plant is blooming. These red blooms, we call this the shrimp plant because the blooms look like shrimp, I guess. This needs to be trimmed too. What I wanted to show you about the mess that the wind and the rain causes, all this leaves, and more particularly, look at all the avocados. Those little avocados. Uh, there's hundreds of them. But an avocado tree is very messy. It uh, produces thousands and thousands and thousands of them. Where is that? I think there's some. It produces thousands and thousands of them. And drops thousands of thousands of them before it picks the ones it wants, I guess. But they're all, all over the the ground is just littered with these covered, covered, covered with those tiny little avocados. It's only a couple of purple blooms left on the Hakaranda. Nice breeze coming off the lake. Ah, the plumeria. Oh, here. Birds of paradise. This is a key lime tree that Got a plague and died, so we cut it off, but it seems like it's going to try to come back. This is called a seacad. It's a very old plant from, um, don't quote me, Paleolithic, Jurassic times. It had a big bloom in there that I cut out um, yesterday. The plumeria. These are the flowers that they make lays out of in Hawaii. This is the bottle brush plant. The bottle brushes are all gone. This is another avocado tree, and uh, I think it's going to take this year off, más o menos. Avocado trees do, they kind of take a year off now and then, so they don't produce anything. Oh, the palm tree we're hoping survives after we sprayed for the big uh, larva that's eating down the trunk. Yeah, we got to get those dead fronds trimmed out of there and spray it again. Those seem to be okay. Big mess back here. I got to clean up one of these days. Used to be an outside workshop, but it was a couple of wooden benches. Actually, it's a couple of benches that I made out of doors and Anyway, they've all deteriorated. So, that's a walk around the yard. Uh, you can see, oh look, the big thunderheads, thunderclouds, thunderstorm clouds, they'll be coming over the mountains tonight. This is the rainy season in Mexico, and for those of us who have lived here all year round, it's actually our favorite time of the year and you know even after two nights of rain uh, you probably can't notice it but even the mountains are ever so slightly greener up there hey if you like me give me one of those thumbs up and please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next please share me with your friends on social media thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.